And was that part of that Walmart? Mm-hmm. Okay. And mine was normal. They had, if anybody, if they had any reason to find anything wrong with anybody, it would have been me because I was the one with the lawsuit, not Mark. <clears throat> anything else? Um, this, the temporary order, I just wanted to touch on this. First of all, Mark, he, he lived in my house until March. And when he moved out, he moved to South Carolina. So how were we going to do 50-50 with him living in South Carolina? Matthew still had, you know, a place that well, this was his home. And we had so many things that were unresolved that I thought Judge Kelly came up with a very fair um, visitation schedule for Mark. We were very lenient as far as it was when his behavior accelerated that we had to put the thumb on it because he was so out of control. And he's been out of control since I filed. This is, this has just went on and on and on. And I just have to say one thing, and that is that this court has the ability to put a stop to all this and protect Matthew as Judge Kelly recognized this need because of all he has witnessed over the last two years. Um, Matthew, just always remember that Matthew is the number one priority. This court has witnessed itself the manipulation and the harassment that Mark is capable of, and he is using that same manipulation with my son at that same level because Matthew talks to me. And I am, I'm afraid for my son. I'm afraid for me. I've actually become afraid of Mark, if you want to know the truth. And I, this is not the man I married. I don't know this man. And I, I just ask that this court put a stop to it once and for all. All right. I think we've got it. Thank you. Auburn? I don't know where to start. You, you, you've Listen. heard a lot of half-truths. You've heard a lot of exaggerations. Let's get back to the airport thing. The first one with some stewardess. This is the first I've heard of it. I wasn't told about any airport situation with a stewardess. I know nothing about it. Don't know anything about it. The issue in Atlanta, let me ask you, how many of you would put your child in a car without a car seat at the age of nine months? Raise your hand. Well, none of you. How many of you would drive your car, your car with answer, a child we're not unrestrained? Answering questions, Ms. Tralburn, to, yeah. to just present the, the, your argument. Your opportunity to we reply. Were in, we were in Columbus. The, air, the weather was bad. I called the airline and said, if we get on this airplane, will you guarantee that we will make our connector in Atlanta to Ontario? They said, yes, we got on the airplane. We got to Atlanta. They lied. The airplane was gone. There was a clerk named Clemens, and she's even admitted that the people were rude, and she wasn't standing there when the conversation took place. Clemens wanted us to fly into LAX and drive our son unrestrained because we couldn't get a car seat because in 2008, which is when this happened, it took weeks of advanced reservations to get a car seat. Ultimately, were you told to leave the airport? No, sir, I was not. What happened was I refused to get on the plane to LAX because I had no way of safely and legally transporting my son from LAX to Ontario, which I don't know if you're familiar with Southern California, about the distance of Charleston to Huntington with millions of more cars on the, on the freeway. Okay? I'm not afraid of Southern California driving. I lived in Southern California for most of 38 years. I worked for the newspaper. You could walk to the Ontario airport from the newspaper where I worked and a TV station. If you're familiar with Brian Kilmeade of Fox News, I wrote the news for him in Ontario. So you, I refused you, you to get on the airplane. You early left the airport, then you weren't asked to leave. He told me that I, I told him that I wasn't going to get on the airplane and fly it. And he says, well, I'm not going to let you on the airplane. I said, I've already told you I'm not going to do it. And he says, okay, then you need to go find a place to stay tonight. I was not ordered out of the airport. I was, we flew the next day. And we flew into Ontario. Had we had a car seat available, I would have done it. He called me a wimp because I was afraid to drive in LA traffic. I drove an airport shuttle for three years in Southern California. I forgot more about LA traffic than most people know. Okay. The bottom line is that I was asked to make a safety choice, and I made the safety choice and the legal choice to protect our child. We understand your point on that. Is there anything else? The, you want the to say swimming pool incident at the hotel. Okay. We got to the Comfort Inn in suites outside of Char near the Charlotte Airport. We'd been traveling down to Isle of Palms in Charleston, South Carolina, for some Mary Kay things for her, and I was taking care of my son while she was, you know, doing Mary Kay. The issue with the airport, with the hotel, was when we checked in, I had called to make sure they had an indoor swimming pool. We checked in, got up to the room. I took Matthew down to the pool to show him the pool so that she could change in private. He was three years old and didn't need to be watching his mama change clothes. Went down to the pool. There was a sign on the pool saying it was closed. As we left the hotel, I told the clerk I would be checking out, took her to the convention, called back, and they said, well, we're not going to check you out. 
and they got rather belligerent. So I called the police because I was concerned about our clothes and the well-being of our personal, be personal items. I simply asked to be moved to another hotel. I've been an airport, a, a hotel front desk clerk and manager. And it's standard procedure that if something's not working right, you let the guests know at time of check-in. And if they need to check out, you help them, you pack them, you move them. You know, you find them another hotel, common decency. They didn't want to do any of that. I did call the Charlotte police because I was concerned about our staff. I was not arrested. I was ordered out of the hotel. I wasn't threatened with any sort of arrest. The cop actually showed up while we were in the parking lot leaving and asked if everything was okay. I said, well, it is now. Okay. The, there was a reference to a protective order from the daycare center. Is there, is there a protective order that's been entered against you? There was, and it's expired. Let me give you the background on that. PJ's Daycare, as of November 9th, their final location is being shut down by the state per some documents that I published the other day. PJ's has had a van that was not properly MBI stickered that I did an article about. They've been sued in, or had complaints filed by more employees than I can count. I reported on a lot of these things. The, the state shut them down in Tays Valley. They lost their business license temporarily in July in Winfield, and then Linda Hunt, Magistrate Hunt, ordered them out of the July out of the uh, Winfield location. That have to do with a protective order. Well, they didn't want the reporter around reporting on them, so they, you know, got a protective order. Judge or not judge, testimony was made in court that was false. That I called them every hour and I asked them to provide a copy of that. And they, of course, the calls didn't happen, so they couldn't do it. But um, Magistrate Workman gave it to them. The issue was. Did you appeal that? I, I appealed that, and it was upheld, and it's now expired, okay? The, the protective order was upheld? Yes, and now expired. And there was, there was false testimony made in court that I could go back and pr pr pull documents to prove that things were said that didn't happen. The judges didn't want to hear it. Here's the situation. Mrs. Matusik, who owns PJs, had a protective order issued against her for slapping around or pulling the hair and hitting one of Dr. Matusik's children with a shoe. He went into court and tried to sue me over that, and the judge laughed at him. They had issues at, at both of their Putnam County daycare. They didn't want the reporter around. It, there's no coincidence in what Mrs. Ms. Martin did not tell you. Matthew was in my family daycare with no problems with me, and their directors testified in court that I still make contributions and donate things to that daycare, and that I was never a problem with any of them or any of the children. That daycare is co-operated and maybe co-owned by Dr. Matusik's ex-wife, Kelly. So of all of the daycares in Putnam County that Dolores chooses to move Matthew to, she moves him over to PJ's, which is owned by the new Mrs. Matusik. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that was designed to, to sever an advertising agreement that I had with them, as well as a barbecue restaurant that, that is downstairs that's owned by the same people and operated by the same people. The um, Read the papers about the Matusiks and the PJ's daycare. Their restaurant went out of business, and they, I heard that their employees at the restaurant filed complaints about lack of payment. I can show you text messages on my cell phone else? that's in security from its employees. Is there anything else that uh, you want to reply to? The issue of her attorney, I did, e I, did, <laughs> I did carbon copy emails to her attorney at her request. Where do you think I got his email address from? I can't just pull her attorney's email address out of the, out of the sky. She gave me his email address, asked that I carbon copy all emails to her. As far as continuances, there was a continuance when my attorney, Joseph Reeder, decided to run for circuit court and decided not to represent me because of political reasons and I run a news website and he was running for circuit court. So we got a continuance. My mother died. I didn't plan that. I didn't want that. We did do a continuance, which they thought, they thought it was inappropriate that I visited my father when my mom died, they actually went into court, and it's on record, protesting me visiting my father to be with my family to grieve when my mother died. Yes, there were a couple of continuances. To my knowledge, there were only two. She makes it sound like I was filing a, continu a continuance every week. Um, we can check. So, you know, okay. yeah, else? and it's on record. I mean, literally, it's on video where, where Henry Glass said, well, you know, there's not a funeral service, so why did he have to fly to California? And I'm paraphrasing him. Because my mom died. And if your mom's died, I would give you whatever time you wanted for, to be with your family. You know, and I, God forbid, I hope that doesn't happen to you. It's not fun. Okay? The issue is about Matthew visiting my mother. Let's talk about that. Doctor, or Judge Kelly asked that I provide a budget for a trip. 
I provided the budget, and I called the Putnam Circuit Clerk's Office to make sure it was received. It was faxed from my bank in South Carolina. They verified that it was received. I then refiled that as part of an emergency Father's Day motion, which Judge Kelly turned down in July and said that he never got the budget for my mother's trip, even though it was refiled in the motion that he turned down. He lied. Because I did what's called a gotcha. I refiled it in another document that he ruled on. In addition, I filed hospice admission forms. And he said, well, I couldn't read the hospice admission form. Then how did he know it was a hospice admission form if he couldn't read it? And he's gone on record as recently just the other day saying that the lack of the trip of my mother being able to see my son is all my fault when he's admitted that the documents were there. He's a lying. Is, is there anything else you want to say to reply? Um, the attorney's fees are exorbitant. There's also the issue of she had a Mary Kay business that she was operating up until or past the time that she filed for divorce and has never provided the court any proof that it's been shut down even to this day. And Judge Kelly ignored the Mary Kay business, valued my business at 25000 and wants me to pay a differential. She should get her business. Yours at 20000 didn't he? I, I believe it was twenty five. That you had gotten a, a, a offer for twenty five, as I recall from the I record. never said I had an offer for twenty five. She said. He said twenty. Yeah, okay, it may be 20, okay, 20, 20, The point is she had her business, and he completely ignored it. There's been no evidence provided to the court that she shut that business down. None. All right, anything to conclude? Um, not that I can remember under, I'm, you know, I'm feeling a little bit stressed right now. I understand, I, I, and we understand that you're about your position with respect to Oh, Judge that. Kelly also protested the fact that I complained to the Supreme Court about his misconduct, and in, his, in the hearing said that because I did complain about that, he wasn't going to let me have my son out of state. That's retaliation. The oh. First Amendment allows me to redress my government for grievances with no restrictions. And by the way, he since sanctioned me, and that's illegal. Uh, I think we understand with respect to this appeal your position with respect to visitation, out-of-state visitation, and so on. So I am not going to – the accusation was made during court that I said that I was going to move my son to California. I'm not going to move my son to California. I have no plans to do that. If I win the lottery, I'd like to go back and live a block away from Nixon like I used to live. It was a nice neighborhood. I used to surf in front of his house. But the bottom line is Matthew's family is here. I have no intention – you know, I couldn't afford to move him to California at this point. But my son deserves to – See his grandmother before she died. I don't know how Judge Kelly's going to correct that because he lied. He's been caught. He, it's documented. He lied. It's black and white. You know, he missed out on spring break in 2012. He missed out on summer in 2012. Every other kid in West Virginia that I know of was allowed to go to the beach. That goes back to that letter I was asking about that specifically references that. Now, you again said something very specific. How would someone else know that that was something so specific to you if you're not the one who wrote that letter? Well, the divorce issue was being talked about all over town. It may have been, but the, letter, the, the sentence I read... I, you know, I don't know what somebody else did or didn't. I don't know who wrote the letter, so I can't get in somebody else's mind that I don't know. Okay? But to my knowledge, and I'm, going, I'm trying to, you know, hop in the DeLorean and go back in time, to my knowledge... That was humor. To my knowledge, the issue of my son going out of state, Judge Kelly said that, well, the temporary order expires in 19 days and I'm not going to make a ruling... To my knowledge, that alleged letter came later on after he made that ruling. So it had nothing to do with that. He, I do specific remember, specifically remember him saying, you know, we, I don't want to change the temporary order because the final hearing is coming up in 19 days. And then Judge Reader, I call him Judge Reader now, he's a judge, Joe Reader, then decided that he wanted to run for circuit judge and, you know, um, asked to get off the case. And that was, you know, it was then continued because of that. But the excessive continuances that she talks about didn't happen. We can look at that. I think we've got your understand your case. We appreciate you coming in. And the case. And I appreciate your time. Thank you.